Okay, now we can go do something. We'll probably go out 30 to 50 feet deep. I mean, in 30 to 50 feet of water. And then we'll just chase marks. I'll start like mid column to three quarter way down. And then um, if we start seeing fish hard on the bottom, then we'll work the bottom. If we, I mean, you can go out to like 80 feet in the middle of the river, okay. but generally the fish run along the side here. Okay. There's some kings right there. So there'll be uh, some downstream current here. And then, so we'll adjust our speeds depending on what direction we're going. Okay. But looking for that, you know, one, one second thump, you know. I'm living by that one second thump. For like 35? Wherever, whatever tickles your fancy. Well, I don't know yet. Oh, fish. That didn't take long. Right off the dam. Just gonna keep the pressure on him. Decent. It's probably eight, nine pounds, I'd guess. I had 45 out. I had 45. It's a decent fish. The Cromer. Oh, come on, buddy. Slow down just a little bit. Now he's putting on a fight. Now he's taking drag. It's like he didn't wake up till he got to the boat. Come on. Nope. Can't get the angle. He wants to keep coming underneath the boat. I want him to go out away from it. Oh, missed the stab. I missed the step. Got him. Whew. He's not giant, but man, he's an upriver bright. What do I do? I just got here. You know, fish is a fish. A fish is a fish. I'm going to keep it. Yeah, I can fish for coho. It's such a pretty fish. I just, I just can't do it, you know. Right, then I just regret it. Yeah. And this one can feed everybody who's coming in from yeah. for the week, you know? Not a giant, probably just seven, seven, eight pounds, but still upriver bright. Look how pretty it is. It's gonna cut great. 
I'll take it. I have a hard time letting loose a really pretty fish like that upriver fish bound for the Hanford Reach. It's going to cut phenomenal. I've got guests coming from out of town from Maine and uh, Wisconsin. And this will make a nice meal for everybody. Perfect size to feed a handful of people. So I'm quite happy with, uh, with that. I can still keep fishing. I'll just have to let go of the bigger fish I catch and I'm okay with that. So I gotta tag my fish. We're only allowed one adult king right now. And that is my one fish for the day. We can keep fishing for coho. There's a few coho here, but I'll probably end up, if I catch anything, it'll probably be another king. I'll just have to let it go, which I'm fine with. My freezer is full of delicious sockeye, and I just needed a fish to feed my friends coming into town. We'll keep trolling. We've got a few more hours of uh, flood tide and then slack tide, and then we're going to have to anchor up and do wobbler fishing. So this lower Columbia Chinook fishery from essentially from Portland downstream is extremely tidally influenced. And so you need to plan your kayak fishing adventures for Chinooks, or even if you're in a power boat, according to those tides. So today I'm right across from the town of St. Helens, Oregon, and I'll show you a tide chart for today, for the day I'm out here. And the main thing I want you to take away from this is you'll see that um, there's an incoming tide, so that's when the tide is pushing up against the river. That causes the river to slow down. Um, even sometimes during low flow years, it'll actually flow in reverse depending on how strong the tide is. And what happens then is those Chinook salmon uh, suspend. They'll move up into the water column and, you know, they'll be anywhere from the bottom up to just, a, you know, 10, 15 feet underneath the surface sometimes. And this is a perfect time to target them um, in a kayak trolling because, A, you're not fighting crazy big currents. Come on, get in there, Ron Holder. There you go. You're not fighting big currents, and the fish are suspended, so you don't have to worry about snagging up on the bottom. Yeah, so this is the time that those 360 flashers suspended with a super bait behind them like I was doing today, um, or spinners behind them, are, and spin fish are really going to excel. And then, as the tide starts to transition, you're going to start seeing boats anchor up in these lines. We call those hog lines. And those hog lines, uh, those guys are going to be running wobblers. So as that current starts to pick up, it's going to be harder for you to troll, which is why most kayak anglers opt to troll during the incoming tide and slack tides. Uh, but also, those fish will start to move deeper to get out of that main flow and current. There's a little bit of area along the bottom where there's less current. It pushes those Chinook down, which is why those wobblers are so effective, because wobblers fish there. So that is when if you're going to anchor up, which if you do decide to anchor up in a kayak, be very, very careful, unless you have an autopilot like me, then you just push a button. Um, that is when those wobbler fisheries really excel. So make sure you understand those tides, research the tides for where you're at, because they're gonna vary substantially depending on where you're at. But as you move further up the river, as you get closer to Portland, the influence of those tides really starts to decline and it makes less of a difference. The uh, mouth of the Washougal River, it's essentially almost no influence. There's just a short period where the, the tides will affect the, the river flow. And if they're dumping a lot of water out of Bonneville, you may not even see any effect at all from the tides there. Yeah, I used to be able to see that little lighthouse from my house. I used to live on a ridge up in Ridgefield over here. You just barely can see it. Um, see that, that, oh, there's fish. That's crazy. I'm taking the inside line. Feels uh feels decent. Whoop, there there we go. <laughs> it's a big fish. You're good. It 
It's a Thule! It's a Thule! <laughs> I've never seen a Chinook jump like that. That's funny. So you can see how dark this one is. This is actually a Thule. This is a fish bound to spawn in lower Columbia rivers. Unlike that bright fish I caught this morning, which is uh, bound for the Hanford Reach. So I'm gonna let this guy go. Even though it's hatchery, I can't retain more than one. I'm gonna send him back so somebody else can have him. Here he goes. Chai City kayaker. Yeah, yeah. so they're, they're flying him out. Oh, no. I was like, it's going to be really cool because it's going to be like a Great Lakes Kingfisher, King Salmon Fisherman yeah. versus the Northwest. And, you know, he's like, he's just getting started, but I love how candid he is. He's super honest. <laughs> this is a big one. It's a big one. What a pretty fish. There's another nice one. Pretty. Keep right. Yep, there he goes. So one thing that will happen is most days, especially in this part of the Columbia that flows north, is you're gonna get the winds are gonna funnel down. It's gonna push against that outgoing current and tide, and it's gonna build up the river. And it can get really lumpy out here. Um, also, you got all the hog lines blocking most of the trolling lane. Good morning, YouTubers. Today I'm out on the Lower Columbia River in search of kings. We've got the whole Old Town crew. We've got Chai City Kayaker from Chicago. He's going to school us on Great Lakes salmon techniques in the Columbia. We'll see if they work. Got Badash Outdoors over there oh, hey. on the bow working on our big water. So we're going to have a whole fleet out there. Hopefully we're going to put the smack down on some fall kings and uh, put a little slime and blood on the deck. So I'll keep you updated as uh, the sun comes up and we get a little bit better lighting. But uh, I'm excited to get out there, chase some big slimy kings. I'd go bigger with the current. At least go 10 or 12. 16 is fine too. We can start fishing. So we're looking for about, right now, I'm looking for about 0.5 miles per hour. Because we're still an outgoing tide. So target speed is half mile an hour to 0.6. Well, the current's really strong right now. We'll, we'll go faster as the... We'll see, like, those guys will have to start dropping off anchor in about an hour. 
So um, always make note of your depth so you can remember if you get hit to go back to that depth. You can always though, like always feel free to check it like every 20, 30 minutes for weeds. That's always a good idea. But if you're getting a good thump, you're probably not too weeded up. I love how Michael just does his own thing, man. He's, oh, oh, fish, fish, fish. Oh, gone. I can't believe that thing came off, man. I think buried. Oh, fish. Can't see him, the lights. In my way. Well, I've only got one hook in him. I need him to come up. Okay, so I thought I'd just quickly show you what a basic Columbia River trolling setup is that I used in these videos. I have a video on my favorite salmon rods, but this is my seven foot uh, Shimano Travala jigging rod. And what this consists of, this whole rig, it's actually pretty simple, although it seems like there's a lot of different components. But the main thing is you're gonna run with like a 50, 65 pound braided mainline is where I'm gonna start. That's going to come down to a sliding weight rig here. So you can see there's the sliding weight rig. This is where you're going to clip in your cannonball right here. I'll use anywhere from 8 to 12 ounces depending on current, even heavier if there's a lot of boat traffic around me. So I don't get hung up, I might even go up to 16 ounces. This just clips into this sliding weight rig here. This allows you to change your weight out very easily and have the weight off when in storage. That's going to go to a bead chain. And then I've got two duo locks tied onto a 24 to 30 inch piece of 40 pound monofilament. You can go heavier. This is what we call the bumper. This essentially just creates space between the weight and your flasher. So your flasher has space to move. Onto the bottom of the bumper, you're going to go ahead and clip in your dodger or flasher. I prefer the Pro Trolls with the 360 fins right there. 
Uh, I've, I've used Leo flashers too and, and caught uh, a lot of fish on them, but I do seem to catch more on the Pro Trolls. It's probably just an effort thing. And then that leaves up a free clip here, and I tie up these leaderboards of super baits and spinners, whatever you like. I typically use 30 to 36 inch leaders, and that this just allows me to take them off very quickly. On the top of those leaders, I'm gonna tie a little bead chain. I can just clip that bead chain into the bottom of my flasher and I'm good to go. So I can change out lures really quickly. I can have some that are pre-baited if I'm using super baits or something like that. And uh, this makes it just really easy to change things out on the go. All right, well, I hope that this video helped you understand a little bit more about uh, when and how to troll for Lower Columbia uh, Kings in the fall. Uh, from the kayak especially. So if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below and I'll put links to a lot of the products that I used here. And just remember, uh, all the purchases made through those links help support this channel. I'll see you next time out on the water. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye guys.